الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا وسندنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين يا رب صل وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحل العقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم رب زدني علما وارزقني فهما My dear brothers and sisters young ones and elderly ones السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another live episode of our health program Your Health Alhamdulillah Coming to you live from Ikra Studios here in Bradford, Manchester Road, Alhamdulillah. My dear brothers and sisters, I hope you're all well, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah ta'ala keep us safe and with afiyat in his protection uh, till our last breath. And may Allah give us the ability to leave the dunya with the kalima tayyibah, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. And this in itself is a fawz azim, a great thing. Because if you look at the Hadith literature, it's quite clear that entering paradise depends on Allah's mercy and then the kalima la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. The Hadith is very clear in the chapter Babul Hawd wal Shafa'a, the chapter of the Hawzi Qasr of Rasulullah and the chapter of intercession, you'll find Hadith in abundant which say that the person who reads la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah he will be taken out of Jahannam. SubhanAllah. Amazing hadith. In one hadith, long hadith, Rasulullah says that, you know, people will approach different prophets of Allah for, you know, so intercession can, uh, uh, so uh, the, the actual reckoning can begin. They'll go to Sayyidina Adam, Sayyidina Ibrahim, Sayyidina Nuh, all the way to Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Isa and then they'll come to Rasulullah because all the other prophets will say, look, we are just not, uh, able to do this mammoth task and great task. So they'll come to Rasulullah and Rasulullah will say, I am for this, Ana laha. and he وسلم, will go in front of Allah and the hadith. I'm just making this hadith very brief. Rasulullah says that Allah will tell me some special words of hamd, which, will, which I don't know now, but Allah will tell me then at that point, and I will praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then Allah will say these words to Rasulullah here. Allah ta'ala will say, Ya Rasulullah, irfa' ra'sak. وَقُلْ تُسْمَعْ وَسْعَلْ تُعْتَى وَشْفَعْ تُشَفَعْ That Ya Rasulullah, raise your, you raise your head and, you know, speak and you shall be listened to and ask and you shall be given and intercede because your intercession will be accepted. And then the Rasulullah says, I'm going to say, Ummati, 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 Oh Allah, my Ummat, my nation, what will happen to them? And then Allah Ta'ala will say to Rasulullah, Hadith, uh, in brief, that go to, you know, Jahannam, and anybody in whose heart is even, you know, uh, the different types of sefarage, this is when the sefarage has been done, the big sefarage, and this is the people who have gone to Jahannam. So go to Jahannam, and the people who are in Jahannam, who have even to the equivalent of a mustard grain of goodness, you take them out. And the Rasulullah says that I will go and I will do so. Then I'll come back in front of Allah and I will say the same words of praise of Allah and I will fall in sajda and Allah will say the same words to Rasulullah. Okay, ya Rasulullah, irfa ra'sak wa qul tusma wa sal tu'ta wa shfa'tu shaffa. Ya Rasulullah, raise your blessed head and speak. You shall be listened to, ask and you shall be given. 
and intercede because your intercession shall be accepted. And Rasulullah will say again, Ya Rab, Ummati, 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 Ummati. Allah Ta'ala will say again, go to Jahannam and whoever's got a small amount of in their heart of goodness equal to the equivalent of a barley seed, you take them out. And the Rasulullah says, I will do so and I will take them out. Then I'll return for the third time. And again, the same process, I will praise Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and then Allah will say to Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, ifa ra'sak wa qul tusma all these words that Ya Rasulullah raise your blessed head ask, uh, speak you shall be listened to ask you shall be given and intercede your intercession shall be accepted and again Rasulullah will say Ya Rab Ummati Ummati and Allah will say now go to Jahannam and the people in there who have even the equivalent of a small piece of a mustard seed of goodness take them out and the Rasulullah will do so and then after doing so Rasulullah will come for the fourth time Fourth time. And then he will say, Ya Allah, إِذَن لِي فِي مَنْ قَالَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Ya Allah, give me permission to take the people out of Jannah who have just said, La ilaha illa Allah. Who have done no good in their life but have just said, La ilaha illa Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Give me the ability to take them out. And the Hadith Sharif says, that, and this is in Bukhari Sharif and Muslim Sharif, that Allah Ta'ala says, Allah will say to Rasulullah, Ya Muhammad, هَذَا لَيْسَ لَكَ Oh Muhammad, this is not for you. This is not for you to take these people out. And then the hadith continues, Allah will say, وَبِعِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي وَكِبْرِيَائِي وَأَزْمَتِي That by my splendor, by my might and my dignity and my honor, I will take لَأُخْرِجَنَّ مِنْهَا مَنْ قَالَ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ This is for me, I will take out from Jahannam whoever said لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Muhammad Rasulullah. So my friends, dying with Iman, لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Muhammad Rasulullah will take you out of Jahannam inshallah. And my friends, this is a health topic. So this is why I'm saying this to you. Health doesn't, doesn't just mean physical health. Health, even more importantly, is spiritual health. The Hadith Sharif tells us that there is a part in our body. If that is, you know, in, if the equilibrium is in there, if that is uh, well, the whole body is well. And if that isn't well, if it's unwell, the whole body is unwell. Allah, and the Hadith says, you know, be aware, that is the heart. Qalb, the heart. If the heart's good, إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهِ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Whoever comes to Allah Taala with a sound heart. So when you're in physical health, Alhamdulillah, but it needs to also be kind of uh, balanced with having a good heart. A good heart means a heart that contains no malice, no evil. Yeah, a heart that wishes uh, well for his uh, fellow brothers and sisters. A heart that harbors no rancor and no enmity. You know, in short, is exactly what the teachings of Rasulullah Sallallahu should do for us. So if we follow the teaching of Rasulullah, we will have a qalb salim, a, 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 a perfect heart. And this perfect heart, my friends, will have a massive impact on our health. And we know, if you follow the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if we fast Monday, Thursday, you know, I've done this so many times, I've explained to uh, audiences up and down uh, the country, how good fasting on Monday, Thursday is. There's a whole, uh, I did a whole uh, um, a topic on this of the seven benefits of fasting. And it's phenomenal how good it is for cancer, how good it is for kidney disease, how good it is for metabolism and so much more. Oral health, doing miswak regularly. It has so much impact on our inflammatory levels in, our, on, in all our body. Making sure, you know, our teeth are in tip-top condition. We don't have mercury amalgams and all these you know, uh, things in our body which uh, poison in our teeth, which poison our body. And waking up for tahajjud salah at night time in the last third of the night, amazingly good for blood pressure, tension, worries. And the biggest thing that waking up for tahajjud in the last third is the time where Allah Ta'ala comes to the sky of the heaven. Allah Ta'ala says, Hal min mustarzikin farzuq. Farzuq. Anybody, is there anybody who wants more livelihood? Anybody wants more, kind of, if you want more money, more barakah? Then, you know, where is he and where is she? I can provide. Anybody in distress, I can take away their distress. In you know, Allah keeps asking, asking until the dawn, true dawn appears. So, my friends, we need to get into uh, kind of sync with the sunnah of Rasulullah. We've tried every other way. Now, try, try the way of Rasulullah. Everything from talking, mannerisms, acting and everything. The sunnah of Rasulullah is amazing. Okay, now today's topic is about tinnitus. Tinnitus means when a person 
hears a humming, a buzzing, a ringing sound in either one ear or the other ear. My friends, did you know up to 10, between 10 to 15 percent people worldwide have this problem of tinnitus? In fact, there's a person called Kent Taylor, a billionaire guy from America. He was the CEO and kind of maverick of the Roadhouse restaurant chain in, uh, chain in Texas. This person, they found him one day dead in a field outside his house. This, this you know, extremely wealthy individual. Okay, he was the exception, but this guy committed suicide. And why did he commit suicide? Because of the constant noise in his ear, the buzzing ring. Imagine having a noise in your ear, bzzz, or ringing, ringing, ringing all the time. You're sleeping, you can hear it. You're awake, you can hear it. In every situation, you can hear this noise. It is enough to drive a person to insanity, and in this tragic case, to suicide. I mean, that was the exception, but it is very, 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 very disconcerting, and it's very, very <coughs> debilitating. It causes stress. And 10 to 15% of people have this noise in the ear. Today, I want to talk about this. And in fact, before I even progress, you know, you'll know in the ear, you have three kinds of bones. You have the malleus, the anvil, and the stapes, three small bones right in the inner ear. Then you have the cochlea that contains so many small, small hair cells. These can be damaged very, very easily by loud noises, huh? by any kind of, uh, what's the word, uh, uh, um, the lack of blood circulation to the ear, congestion, ear infections, diseases like mini ears, where this kind of, uh, the stapes gets damaged. So much things can damage old age. Uh, as we age, uh, as we age, we have oxidative, oxidative stress that affects us, etc., etc., etc. So many things affect our uh, ears. So we need to protect our ears. Now, there's, I'm going to go through, first of all, inshallah, uh, what causes this to happen? Yeah, What illnesses cause this to happen? Number two, what does this uh, tinnitus lead to? Because there's studies that show that it, leads, it makes a person more susceptible to uh, Alzheimer's and dementia. And I mentioned before as well, the best thing for Alzheimer's and dementia is coconut oil. So, uh, and then I'm going to mention uh, homeopathic remedies. I'm going to go through the whole list of homeopathic remedies that can really, really turn this off like you turn a tap off. Yeah, And s certain other uh, uh, natural remedies that you can use. And then I'm going to mention one particular method which you can use where 50% of people who've tried it, 50% have found great relief from this. And it's something very, very simple. You do with your own hands and on the back of your head. I'll go through that as well, inshallah. We've got a call waiting. Let's just go to the call first. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ji, by your own life. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, we've just lost that call. Uh, huh. So as I was saying, tinnitus is very, very common. 10 to 15 percent of people have this illness and it's very very distressing so first of all <coughs> let's look at the things that can cause tinnitus so first of all you know loud in, in america uh, according to the american tinnitus association there are 907 there were 971,990 veteran administration claims for tinnitus just in the year 2012. That's nearly a million claims for tinnitus-related uh, disabilities, which resulted in a payment of $1.2 billion. And these numbers are continuing to grow. And in this day and age, we have, we have so many people who listen to, you know, nasheeds and, mashallah, Quran, tilawat loudly at high volume uh, and of course which is, is a great thing to do so but it can cause damage to these cells there's about 1800 cells that can fit on the head of a pin small small hair cells that can break or can move out of the way because of loud noises because you have to look at the uh, the uh, kind of the ear uh, you know physiology if you look at the ear, ear physiology you'll understand that these bones, like the malleus, which is attached to the tympanum, the middle of the ear, and then that's attached to the anvil, the incus in the middle, and that's attached to the stapes, which joins the whole three things to the inner ear. It's like a trumpet kind of thing that absorbs and takes in noises from outside to the inside. This can easily be damaged, 
and uh, many things can damage this. We've just got uh, another call. Let's get to this call first. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam. Ji. Ji. I have asked for a theater. Is it a theater? Is it a theater? Arthritis, yani rheumatoid arthritis, yeah, osteoarthritis. Yeah, room, room, room. Rheumatoid arthritis. Yeah, it's too high, both high. Blood may high at high, both. Ah, rheumatic factor high, okay, nah, ESR levels. Take up some to join, shall I just? Don't know, ma'am, but I don't know, I stroke. Don't know, don't know, theater, but I don't know. inshallah, just a lap, some to join, shall I? Ah, just shit. Natcha. So, as I was saying, uh, the EA issues are massive and uh, there's a lot of elderly people up and down the country and indeed around the world who uh, whose life has become so distressing because of these uh, loud noises. So, I mean, there's many, many people who say that their uh, tinnitus started because of loud noise. And you'll understand the stats I've given you from the ATA in America, nearly a million people just in the year 2012 applied for this disability payment for the year, soldiers. And what happens in, as in, in the army, you're exposed to loud noises, explosions, etc. There's many people who've said that we were in a tank when it was hit by a, uh, you know, a, a, a grenade. And from that point, our ears have uh, been ringing. Many people even say, me, many people even say that, you know, uh, after we cleaned our ears, we went for kind of e uh, ear irrigation. And after that, our ears uh, began to have this noise. Yeah. One person said, I went to a barber shop and uh, they put some kind of a device on his chin. You know, when you cut your hair, you have this uh, kind of vibrating sound, don't you? So because of that, he says, since that time, my ear has, uh, you know, I've had this uh, loud noise in my ear. So normally, when these cells have kind of, uh, when they're triggered, you know, you go to a loud place where there's loud noise, you go home and your ears are still ringing, but that normally dissipates quickly. In, with the tinnitus, it doesn't dissipate, and that noise is still, uh, the conduction of the noise is still there pretty much for, you know, as long as it takes for it to kind of be healed. Uh, and there are many, many famous people who have had this issue. Sometimes tinnitus is a sign of underlying nasopharyngeal cancer. Sometimes, in extreme cases, tinnitus is, a, in, is indicative of an underlying nasopharyngeal cancer, and it's very important, especially if you, it's only in one ear, and especially if you have things like where you feel pain around your sinuses and you have ear infections, it's very important to, and especially nosebleeds as well, to get this checked out. High blood pressure, that can also cause uh, tinnitus if you have high blood pressure. It's very, very important. To, I mean, in fact, if somebody's got tinnitus, they should definitely have their blood pressure checked. It's very, very important because high BP can cause uh, okay, okay, called tinnitus. And that's why, because when you have high BP, I mean, there's four different reasons why you have, five different reasons why you have high BP. One of the reasons is this, that you have heart disease. In heart disease, your vessels, blood vessels are clogged up, especially the ones in the extremities, in the ear, that is extremity, your hands are extremities, your head extremities, your feet are extremities, uh, your private organs are extremities. These areas suffer first when you have heart disease, because they're blocked with lipids and uh, cholesterol and, uh, and things of that nature. Huh. So also, if you have infections and earwax, that can cause uh, tinnitus to start. In uh, one particular study, there were 2,400 people who had uh, tinnitus, and 11, 11 of them said that their condition started after they underwent ear irrigation. So anybody who's got ear issues, they mustn't clean it with one of them kind of cue uh, things that they put into the ear, the long kind of uh, things. Absolutely not, because what can, that can do is, first of all, it can damage the middle ear, number one, and number two, what can happen is that it can actually impact, make the wax more compact. So it's very important, if you, if you have got ear uh, wax, there's something called Cerimol, C-E-R-U-M-O-L, Cerimol, which is a proprietary uh, kind of uh, medicine you can use to get rid of the ear wax. So number two, just get some warm drops of uh, olive oil, and before you go to sleep, put it into your ear and then put a cotton uh, bud there. It'll get rid of all the one, two, three days. It'll get rid of everything. You mustn't, though, use them cotton uh, wool tips that people tend to do. Uh, it's very dangerous. And there's so many studies that show that, you know, Alzheimer's can lead, uh, sorry, uh, the uh, tinnitus can lead to Alzheimer's and dementia. Uh, and another thing you'd be interested to know, that there were roughly... <laughs> Uh, 3,497 reports of tinnitus 
after vaccinations for COVID-19. That's an interesting stat. 3,400, and in fact, they were, according to the UK's yellow card reporting system, uh, people who had COVID-19 shots, 9,210 people reported ear disorders. 9,210 people on the UK's yellow card, all right, reported uh, ear complications after the vaccines. Uh, from these, there were 3,497 who actually developed tinnitus, and uh, 2,663 from these 3,497 were people who reported it after the uh, AstraZeneca vaccine. So just be aware uh, that <clears throat> in some occasions uh, that can happen after vaccines as well. So what do you do then? Let's talk about what can you do when you have this, you know, uh, you know, if you have this issue, what can you do? And just before we go to there, let's talk about a few conditions that cause it. So I've mentioned high blood pressure. I've mentioned exposure to loud noises. I've mentioned, oh, well, long-term use of aspirin. For some reason, long-term use of aspirin can cause tinnitus. And coupled with the fact that tinnitus can happen with people who are elderly because of oxidative stress. And the people who are elderly normally have high uh, blood pressure and they have heart disease and they're prescribed aspirin. So you can see how the trouble can be caused by long-term use of aspirin. Also, beta blockers and antibiotics, they can also cause tinnitus. Beta blockers and antibiotics can also, just be aware, can be uh, the causation of tinnitus. Uh, compacted earwax, again, if you don't clean your ears correctly and you, rather than taking it out, you actually compact it and you cause damage to the middle ear, that can also cause uh, this ringing and buzzing sound. Another thing, people don't realize is that, you know, your spine and your kind of your spinal correlation and your, uh, your vertebrae, if they're not in alignment, yeah, then that can also cause issues with uh, tinnitus because of uh, a disruption to the blood supply to the ears. This is why it's very important to visit uh, a chiropractor or an osteopath uh, regularly. It's very beneficial. And yeah, again, and finally, food intolerances. Food intolerances can also cause uh, uh, issues like tinnitus. And, but the biggest thing that causes tinnitus is loud noise. And people nowadays have a lot of loud music input into their ears. Can you imagine what that is doing to them? Uh, 1700 nerves on one pinhead. Extremely, extremely dangerous. Inshallah, after the break, we're going to go for a break shortly, inshallah. After the break, we're going to go through uh, various you know, kind of, uh, you know, things like magnesium and zinc and ginkgo biloba and the special method I'm going to explain to you to use on your head where 50% of people who use this method, they found, mashallah, significant relief. One lady actually found complete silence. And you can see on the video, she starts crying because the first time in years, she's felt the you know, uh, silence and she's felt the absence of the, of the noise. So, inshallah, we're going to continue after the break. Inshallah, please stay with us. If you have any health uh, queries, please do call in and we will be here to answer your questions, inshallah. Uh, and also, we're going to go through the list of uh, homeopathic remedies. There's about four main remedies and seven associated remedies. And one of these will be a remedy that will help you in your case of tinnitus. But you'll have to pay attention because... You have to match the symptoms, inshallah. Uh, so, until after the break, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.